Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a small form factor Ryzen 5000 powered mini PC. Now on my channel, I've done a few of these builds with the 5600G and the 5700G. But the one new 5000 series APU I haven't used and has been requested a lot on my channel is the 5300G and I was finally able to get my hands on one. Now I'm actually super excited about this little APU. It's not the most powerful one. We only have four cores, eight threads, up to 4.2 gigahertz, but I think we can get some decent performance out of it. Now when it comes to the case, I wanted to go as small as possible, but I didn't want to have to worry about a Pico PSU, so I opted for the NWIN Chopin. These only come in black, but I did custom paint it white, and I had footage of it, but unfortunately I deleted it. This is a great case, and it comes with a 150 watt PSU. It's a mini ITX case, and perfect for a build like this. As for the motherboard, I went with an ASRock B550 Mini ITX AC, one of the cheaper ones that you can find on Newegg and Amazon. As for cooling, I went with the Noctua NH-L9A, it's the black version. I have a 1TB Inland NVMe SSD, and when it comes to RAM, I wanted to go as fast as possible, so I opted for 16GB of DDR4 running at 4400MHz. And obviously, the heart of the system is going to be powered by the Ryzen 5300G. So putting together a small form factor build like this is actually pretty easy when you pick the correct parts. First thing I wanted to do was throw my uh, storage in here. Went with that Inland 1TB NVMe. It's going to mount right here on the board and we have a heat sink ready to go. Once I had that in place, it was time for the cooler and this Noctua NH-L9A actually comes with a backplate. So you do need to remove the backplate that comes on the motherboard. But this is one of my favorite coolers for small form factor builds. It's got 100% RAM clearance and you shouldn't have any trouble with it at all. And it actually looks really good on this ASRock board. Kind of got a gray and black theme going here. Now it's time to put my RAM in here. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 4400 megahertz. This is a bit expensive, but keep in mind with these APUs, the faster the RAM, the better performance you're going to get out of it. So now that I have everything in place on the motherboard, it's time to throw it in this case here. This is the Chopin, but keep in mind you can't get these from the factory in white. I was really hoping that one day they would release them. So what I did was just take the black one you can pick up for around 100 bucks and paint it white. It is a bit of a tight fit, but this should fit in here perfectly. And this does come with a pre-installed 150 watt power supply, which is going to be plenty for this 5300G, even if we do a little bit of overclocking, which we're definitely going to do. It can take a while to get this cable management looking pretty good in here because it's such a tight fit, but uh, just take your time with it. You might want to use a couple zip ties, but when it's all said and done, you can have something that kind of looks like this. If I took a little more time, I probably could have done a little better job with the cable management up front, but overall, I think it looks good. Everything blends in and it fits in here really nicely. So like I mentioned, I will be overclocking this system. I've already run through everything I needed to do. I've done some testing here and I kind of wanted to get it at that sweet spot given that we're in such a small form factor build with a smaller cooler. But what we have here is the Ryzen 5300G, four cores, eight threads, base clock of four gigahertz with a boost up to 4.2. I've overclocked all four cores to 4.3 gigahertz. The built-in Radeon 6 graphics normally run at 1700 megahertz, but I've overclocked this to 2200 megahertz, and I've left that RAM basically stock right out of the box at 4400 megahertz. I did want to go a bit higher on that CPU, but since we have such a small form factor case, I think uh, 4.3 is going to be just fine. Alright, so here it is. I've installed Windows 10 Pro. I got a bunch of stuff to test here. As you can see, we have that 5300G overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz, uh, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 4400 megahertz, and the built-in Radeon 6 graphics. I've also overclocked these, so if I head over here, just start a render test. Sensors, we're at 2200 megahertz. And as for heat, this is actually doing a pretty good job. I ran Cinebench R23, and that takes 10 minutes to run the multi-core test. At the end of that, we only reached a max temperature on the CPU of 81 degrees Celsius. It's a little hotter than I'd like, but we're in such a small case, I think it's going to work out just fine. Under everyday use and normal loads, I haven't seen this go over 65 degrees Celsius. And while gaming for extended periods of time, this Noctua cooler can definitely keep this 5300G cool, even with that CPU and GPU overclocked. So the first thing I always like to do with these small form factor builds is run some benchmarks. So let's go ahead and move over there now. First on the list, we have Geekbench 5, single core, 1271, multi, 4501. Keep in mind with that multi-core score, we only have four cores and eight threads here. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks. First up, we have 3D Mark Night Raid with a total score of 16,243. Firestrike, 4,042. 
and finally, Time Spy with a 1,482. Now those are just benchmarks, I always like to get those out of the way first. Now it's time to move over to some real world gaming and emulation. First on the list, Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, low, medium mix, we got an average of 64 FPS. Now we can bump this up by taking everything down to low or very low, but I think it's pretty smooth like this and it looks great. Next up, GTA 5, 1080p, normal, high mix. Now when I talk about normal and high, Basically, the only thing set to high here is the texture quality, but by the end of this run, we had an average of 73 FPS. It's looking pretty good in my opinion. Here's Control. Was uh, thinking we'd get a bit more out of it, but I had to drop this down to 900p low, and we just can't hit 60 at 900p. Even at 720, we're around 55 average, but here at 900p, we got an average of 43 FPS. Witcher 3 is another one I had to drop that resolution down to 900p with. I got an average of 51 FPS, low settings. At 720p, this will do an average of 63. Doom Eternal performed better than I thought it would, but we are at 900p, low settings, 100% resolution scale. We got an average of 66 FPS. And finally, for the PC gaming side of things, we have Overwatch, 1080p, high settings, we got an average of 71 out of this. I know it's an older game, it's very well optimized, it's been on the market for a while and runs really well on low-end hardware. Moving over to some emulation, very impressed with the PS3 performance. We're using RPCS3, Vulcan Backend, Skate 3, which is one of the harder ones to emulate. It's not the hardest, but it does give these APUs a run for its money, especially these quad core variants. But uh, with this one here and that overclock, we're able to get a constant 60 FPS out of this game. Pretty impressive. Seeing how well PS3 ran on this little system, I was sure we wouldn't have any trouble with PS2, but unfortunately we just can't do 4K with Gran Turismo 4. With other games, or easier to emulate games, you can go up to 4K with a system like this, but this is a harder one to run, and I'm at 1440p, but it's running super smooth. And finally, SimU, the Wii U emulator with Breath of the Wild, Vulcan back in, async shaders, we are at 1080p, I did upscale it a bit. I was hoping we could hit 60, but you might just want to lock this at 30. We're getting an average of around 41 FPS, and running this at 30 is still great at 1080p. If you wanted to drop it down to 720p, you could hit 60, but I would rather run it at 30 at a higher resolution. One thing I always worry about with these smaller form factor builds is power consumption, and not really the price of the power, but uh, if that PSU is going to hold up or not. And keep in mind with this, all of my tests were run with the overclock on that GPU and CPU. At idle, 32 watts, this can be brought down a lot by keeping it at the stock clocks. Average gaming, 114 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall using a kilowatt meter was 138 watts. Remember, we're working with a 150 watt power supply, so we're right there on the edge, but this is going to be fine. And again, I do have to stress this, the overclock definitely pulls a lot more power than this thing stops. So overall, I think this little 5300 build turned out really good. We're getting great thermals, even with that overclock on the CPU and GPU. Power draw is much higher than I would like it to be, but uh, like I mentioned, if you didn't have this overclocked, it would be much, much lower. 
Now, some emulators you didn't see running in this video are PSP, Dreamcast, GameCube, and Wii. They will run at full speed on this. If we're getting full speed out of Skate 3 using the RPCS3 emulator for PS3, then we'll be good to go with those lower end systems. Now, this is far from a high end gaming PC, but it will get you by at 900p or 720p on some of the harder to run games, and esports titles are going to perform just fine on this machine. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in building something like this, I will leave a few links in the description. Uh, most of the stuff will be gotten from Amazon and eBay. But if there's anything else you want to see running on this system, or if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.